लम्हे गम में बसते जीवन को पर्दे पे बुनते that believe that is believe and in sports pankaj advani wins the ongc ibsf world billiards championship in time format a very good evening and welcome to this news bulletin on dd news i am rangabashu let's start off with the big story at the saw Scientists started an experiment today that aims to reenact on a small scale the big bang that believe that is believed to created the universe. The first stage of the experiment passed off successfully today after a beam of protons were sent around a 27 km underground ring. If conducted successfully, the experiment could possibly unlock the remaining secrets of particle physics, including a better understanding of dark matter and the creation of gravity. Scientists are reenacting the Big Bang on a small scale at CERN underground lab near Geneva. The experiment will help them in collecting vital data needed to explain the origins and evolution of the universe. The Large Hadron Collider or LHC uses giant magnets to fire beams of energy particles around a 27 km tunnel where they smash together. Eventually two proton beams were steered in opposite directions around the LHC at close to the speed of light completing about 11000 laps each second. We will take the beam around oct octant by octant. First we will take it to the point to point 3. So that's uh, about 3 kilometers where we will stop it on a on a on a block on one of the collimator blocks. We will uh, make any adjustments we need to the orbit. Uh, then we will remove the block. We, ha we have no absorber at point four, but uh, there, is a t there is a TV screen that will see the beam passing through the point four, and we will stop the beam at point five, just before CMS. Then we will probably take a, f a few uh, pulses, because when we strike the absorber block at point five, CMS uh, sees uh, particles, and they will use it to time in the detector. At allotted points around the tunnel where the beams cross paths, four massive detectors have been installed to monitor the collisions for interesting events. The detectors are designed to monitor the billions of particles that emerge from the fireballs, capturing on computer the way they came together, flied apart or just simply dissolved. One of the key aspects of this experiment is to record the enormous amount of data relating to the experiment and then making a meaningful interpretation of that. Grid computing is being used to process the data where vast numbers of supercomputers are connected around the globe. India has made major scientific and technological contributions to this new atom smasher, also called the Large Hadron Collider or LHC. Indian laboratories led by Raja Ramana Center for Advanced Technology at Indore have contributed substantially towards construction of the accelerator, the LHC itself, with many components being fabricated by the Indian industry and supplied to CERN. Professor Raghav Verma of the Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai, represented Indian scientists. Bureau Report, DD News. Dispelling all fears surrounding the Big Bang experiment, former President Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam said that it is an important contribution to physics. Speaking to reporters after inaugurating the continuing nursing education program at the Army Hospital in the capital, Dr. Kalam said the scientists are conducting the experiment after taking all precautions and the fears being associated with it are media created. Two years back, I was in the exact spot where they are do doing the experiment. I have seen there, I have seen the facility and uh, the, what they are trying to do, they want to split the particles, you know, that is ions and uh, positron and uh, this is going to give us how we are born, earth is born and uh, how we are born. It's a, for physics, it's going to be a very important contribution. So there is no danger. It's, an, it's underground. Well, Congress leader and former Chief Minister of uh, Punjab, Captain Amrinder Singh, was today expelled from the Punjab Assembly. He was indicted by House Committee in a graft case and a seat declared vacant. The ruling Shiromani Akali Dal passed the resolution in the Assembly amid protests by slogan-shouting Congress members who boycotted the proceedings. 
The Punjab Assembly on Wednesday expelled former Chief Minister Amrinder Singh from the membership of the House for the rest of its term. The minister was expelled after being indicted in a case of alleged financial irregularities and his seat was declared vacant. It was adopted by voice vote amid protest by slogan shouting Congress members. The 66-year-old Congress leader described the incident as violation of the Constitution and said he would not leave unchallenged any move to disqualify him from the House. The Congress refused to comment on the issue but said the state government was carrying out a political vendetta against him. अमरेंदर सिंह जी न्यायपालिका की शरण में गए हैं उन्होंने शायद न्यायपालिका हाई कोर्ट में मूव किया है तो ये विधायिका और न्यायपालिका के अधीन जो मामला है इसमें हम लोगों को इंटरफेयर नहीं करना चाहिए वैसे अमरेंदर सिंह जी के साथ पंजाब की सरकार का जो पॉलिटिकल वेंडाटा है जिसके जो इस हाउस की प्रोसीडिंग के बाहर का मामला है उसमें निश्चित रूप से हम लोगों की जो जहाँ तक ये है अमरिंदर सिंह जी के खिलाफ बदले की भावना से कार्रवाई की जा रही है A special committee of the assembly had last week indicted Amrinder Singh for alleged irregularities in exempting 32.10 acres of land for private development in Amritsar during his tenure as chief minister. Bureau report DD News. The Supreme Court today cancelled the bail of Shashil and Gopal Ansal. The Ansal brothers had earlier been sentenced to two years of imprisonment by the trial court in the Upar fire tragedy, which claimed 59 lives. A bench comprising Justices B. N. Agarwal and Justice G. S. Singhvi directed Sushil and Gopal Ansal to surrender by 4 p.m. tomorrow. The order was delivered on a petition filed by the Association of Victims of the Upar Tragedy, challenging the bail granted to the Ansal brothers and two other convicts by the Since Delhi High Court. Since we have approached court. the Supreme Court against the High Court order and they've held that uh, the bail has been cancelled, they've been asked to surrender by tomorrow. And they took a strong view on the tampering of evidence. They felt even the trial court could have cancelled the bail. When we had moved for cancellation of bail, when Ansels have tampered with the evidence in the uh, judicial custody. A four-member committee formed after talks between West Bengal government and Trinamool Congress visited Shingu today. The objective was to identify land that could be returned to the local farmers. Tata Motors earlier cautioned the West Bengal government not to take any step that might disturb the nano-integrated auto cluster. The state government had assured the Tatas that no change in the project area would take place. However, Trinamool Congress Chief Mamata Banerjee says that the committee's task will be to locate 300 acres within the project area and 100 acres outside it. And joining us from Kolkata with an update on the Shingu deadlock is our correspondent Sneheshis Sur. Sneheshis, as far as uh, efforts are concerned, now that uh, the Trinamool Congress is, is looking for 300 acres of land within the project area, do you think that will be an acceptable solution to the Tatars? Rangam, let's not talk about how much amount of land uh, who is asking for. There was a deadlock and one step has been reached that a broader consensus has been reached between the opposition Trinamool Congress led agitation and the government of West Bengal because Trinamool Congress was asking for the land uh, from the project site to be given to the unwilling farmers which the state government was denying but now on the Sunday's meeting a broader consensus has been found out where state government has agreed to give away some land to the uh, unwilling farmers on the basis of which a committee of four members, two from Trinamool Congress, two from the state administration had been formed and the committee has met for the first time yesterday and today they had met an on-spot survey and now they are to submit a report within this week on how much land from where within the uh, project premises or outside. Obviously, uh, Tatas have been saying that they want the entire project, including the vendor areas, to be integrated because that what they say is very crucial about the cost of the car and that was the reason for coming to Singur. So we are just waiting day by day on the developments. It is positive, as has been said by both the parties. Now the committee is undergoing the discussions and then they will submit. Meanwhile, the Chief Minister yep. of West Bengal today in a meeting said 
that Singur is an exception and West Bengal is not Singur. In spite of Singur, he said that there are several investors who are coming with big projects and he has also announced that the Nayachor chemical hub has got the clearance of the government of India. Right. Now, Nayachor is the replacement of Nandigram, where initially the chemical hub was proposed. Right. But the people of Nandigram protested and the government came back. And another site close by area, Nayachor has been found Rangam. Right, Sneheshis, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. And in related news, Arcelor Mittal's chief, Lakshmi Nivas Mittal, said that there was no question of his company backing out from investing in India following the Tata's predicament in Shingur. He described the Shingur issue as a one-off incident. Mr. Mittal, however, hoped that the solution could be found to the row over land allotment in Shingur. One case of Shingur cannot be the example for the world. I mean, you can face this kind of a problem in any other country that one particular project can face this kind of a, a position from the people. But the country as a whole is interested in growing. We are getting ready to start the project when we have the approvals, when we have the mining concessions. So there is no delay. There is no revisiting because of Singur. We, want, we are still very excited about our Indian projects. We continue to urge the governments and this all the stakeholders that please support us. This is in the interest of their future growth. It is in the interest of the country. And moving on to other news now. The overall flood situation in North Bihar has improved substantially. The state government late last night ordered a judicial probe into the August 18th breach in the Kosi embankment near Kushaha on the Indo-Nepal border. A one-man commission would be headed by a retired judge of the Patna High Court. The probe was ordered since the breach had not only caused catastrophic floods, but also allowed the Kosi to change its 200-year-old course, bringing misery to over 30 million people in 14 districts. Meanwhile, all the major rivers barring the Kosi, Gandhak and Ganga have receded to a great extent and are now flowing well below the danger mark. AICC General Secretary Rahul Gandhi, who visited a number of relief camps in the worst affected Madhepura, Supal and Araria districts yesterday, also talked to hundreds of flood victims at Kumar Khan block. After interacting with several flood victims and acquiring first-hand information about activities in various relief camps, Mr. Gandhi assured them of maximum help and assistance from the Congress as well as the centre to tide over the crisis. Mr. Gandhi today toured several far-flung areas in Supal and Madhepura district. U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice has, in the last 24 hours, met two key Democrats, Nancy Pelosi and Howard Berman, and discussed how they could help in the Congress ratifying the 1-3 agreement before the end of the session on the 26th of September. Rice met Pelosi, Speaker of the House of Representatives. They discussed the process for considering the 1-3 accord once it has been submitted to the Congress for ratification. Earlier, Rice met with Berman, a vocal critic of the Indo-U.S. nuclear deal, who is also the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Defense Minister A.K. Antony completed a four-day visit to Washington last night. He had a series of discussions with top U.S. officials, including the Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice and U.S. National Security Advisor Stephen Hadley and the Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. They are believed to have discussed ways and means to strengthen bilateral relations in the field of defense between the two countries. They also reviewed the growing military-to-military -military relations marked by the joint ex exercises. Defense Minister A.K. Antony is the first high-level Indian leader to visit Washington after the Vienna waiver by the Nuclear Supplies Group. Well, time for a quick break now, but do stay tuned for more news and updates. Hey, 
ई पर तो पाँच रूपए लिखा है तो अम्मा पाँच रुपया ही दे दो मन नाराज काहे होती है तुम ऐसा करो चार रुपया दे दो जी हाँ किसी वस्तु की कीमत एम यानी लिखे हुए अधिकतम खुदरा मूल्य ऐसी ज्यादा न चुकाए और हो सके तो मोल भाव करे यही है समझदारी का सौदा Welcome back. You're watching the Evening Bulletin on DD News, and moving on to stock markets now. The markets ended sharply lower on the back of profit booking and weak global queues. Metals, oil, telecom, power, and private bank shares witnessed heavy selling. The benchmark indices opened lower following negative queues from the U.S. markets, wherein financial stocks stumbled as Lehman Brothers failed to raise capital. Both the Sensex and the Nifty lost more than a percent. The benchmark Sensex lost 238 points to close at 14,663. The Nifty fell by 68 points. On to forex now. The rupee today breached the crucial 45 level for the first time in 22 months. The Indian currency closed at 45.11, cheaper by 28 paisa against the greenback. This was a result of the sustained demand for the U.S. dollar from banks and oil refiners amid the U.S. currency's rally in overseas market. Foreign exchange dealers said consistent capital outflows from equity markets also weighed against the rupee. Oil refiners continued to buy dollars even though global crude oil prices hovered around $104 per barrel level in Asian trade during the day. Six key infrastructure industries saw growth decline to 4.3% in July from 7.2% a year ago. But the numbers are better than a month ago when it was 3.4%. Crude oil was the worst performer in the grouping with a negative growth of 3% in July this year against a positive trend in the comparable month last fiscal. Oil rebounded after OPEC's surprise output cut. In a statement, OPEC admitted that a weakening in global demand for oil has created a shift in market sentiment, causing downside risks to the crude prices. The cartel added that the market is now oversupplied and members should strictly comply with existing quotas. OPEC ministers on Wednesday announced a surprise output cut following a fall in oil prices to the level closer to $100 a barrel. After nearly five hours of debate, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries said it will return to a production ceiling of 28.8 million barrels per day compared with its existing output target of 29.67 million barrels per day. Oil had fallen nearly 30% from a record $147 a barrel less than two months as high prices and slowing global economic growth reduced demand for fuel. Since the market is oversupplied, the conference agreed to abide by September 2007 production allocations adjusted to include new members Angola and Ecuador and excluding Indonesia and Iraq, totaling 28.8 million barrels per day, levels with which member countries are committed to strictly comply. Meanwhile, OPEC president expressed hope that the oil price will go further down in spite of the decision as the market is oversupplied. My hunch is probably the price will still be going down despite the decisions that we are making. So I don't think this will affect you know, the consumers in, uh, in any way because, first of all, there is an oversupply. Everybody agrees with that. There is uh, stocks are very high. Uh, whether you look at uh, stocks you know, for crude or petroleum products, and then uh, we will have an overhang by the end of the year, and the overhang will be even worse by the early of next year. OPEC members will reassess the situation at the next meeting in Algeria at the end of this year. However, analysts believe that OPEC's move is a compromise meant to avoid new turmoil in the oil markets, but it also reflects cartels' attempts to stop the recent fall in global prices. Business Desk, DD News. Let's move on to sports now. In a repeat of his feat of 2005, Pankaj Advani added the ONGC IBSF World Billiards Championship time format title to the points format crown that he had won last week. Defending champion Advani defeated Devendra Joshi 2,370 points to 2,020 points to complete his domination in the tournament. Pankaj Advani's purple patch continued on Wednesday as the young Qist clinched the World Billiard Championship's time format title with a convincing win over Devendra Joshi in the final at Bangalore. 
In the six hour final split into three sessions, Advani led from the word go and took a huge lead of 1,123 points after the first session, which turned out to be decisive. Though Joshi recovered some ground in the second session, 23-year-old Advani eventually won 2,370 to 2,020 to complete his domination in the tournament. I at one stage thought that even 1,000 points was not enough for a lead. <laughs> That's the caliber of my opponent here today next to me. So, uh, you know, I was just fortunate that I started off well and I got a 1,000-point lead in the first session. Otherwise, things would have been very different today. Pankaj had earlier defeated veteran Geet Sethi to clinch the point format title in the championship on Friday. With this double win, Pankaj repeated his fate of 2005 when he had won both titles in Malta. Sports Desk, DD News. Well, let's move on to the newsmakers now. Renowned music director A.R. Rahman presented the exclusive soundtrack for the Delhi Half Marathon in the capital on Tuesday evening. Many dignitaries, including the president of the Indian Olympics Association, Suresh Kalmadi, were present on the occasion. When there's fire in your heart, more than 30,000 participants are expected to take part in the prestigious Delhi Half Marathon on November 9th. To make the event memorable, what is the finish line? <laughs> Renowned music director Padma Shri A.R. Rahman presented the exclusive soundtrack of the marathon in the capital. It's not an anthem anthem actually, it's more a soundtrack for the commercial which reflects freedom, which reflects, uh, you know, the spirit of running and the spirit to be wild and uh, so that's, that's what we try to do. The marathon is open to everybody. People from all walks of life and above the age of 12 years can participate. Run for fun and fitness, that is also the And marathon is in the globe now, it's a big deal in the world. And it's not the same thing in India. But now, Bharat ka bhi, uh, log jitna marathon, wo ek hai. The registration process begins on 10th September and the last day of registration is 15th October 2008. Participants will have to cover a distance of 7 kilometers. The marathon gives an opportunity to people to congregate on a common platform and develop a feeling of oneness. Rajesh Raj's report, DD News, Delhi. And moving on, a women's specific design bike was launched by Firefox Bikes for the very first time in India in Delhi today. The model 3700 WSD is priced at 16,000 rupees and has been designed exclusively for women. Earlier, the bike was introduced in the international market in 2001. Cosmetic companies have been doing it for a long time, but this is probably the first time that a cycle manufacturer is trying to attract the fairer sex towards using cycles, no actually bikes. On the offer are some unique and definitely attractive bikes, though the price tags of over 16,000 to 40,000 make you jog in the opposite direction, the company plans to increase the company's sales figures by 30% during the current fiscal. Basically, it's designed to, as Jay mentioned, uh, fit the anatomical nature of the woman's body, whether it's smaller hands or a slightly smaller hip structure, shorter legs in general. These are all generalizations. Um, but again, it's designed to take all those things into consideration and provide for a better cycling experience. market is very small right now. Uh, in America, the women market is almost 45%. In India, I would say in, in the mountain biking segment that we have, the market is less than 2%. And this is what we want with the launch of these kind of bikes to bring up the market share to a respectable at least 25%. The company 
is mostly focusing on mountain bikes and high-end road bikes for its growth in the country. Trek's existing models in India are designed to encourage and spread the aura of biking through the mountains and the rough terrains to give, as the company claims, the experience of soaring through the blue skies. At the prices quoted, they better make you feel on top of the world. Tweena Boro's report, DD News, Delhi. The nation today paid tributes to Bharat Ratna Pandit Gobind Balapanth on the occasion of his 121st birth anniversary today. Many prominent leaders paid tributes to the freedom fighter. Vice President Mohammed Hamid Ansari hosted an iftar gathering at Hyderabad House in the capital today. Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, Congress President Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, Cabinet Ministers, Chief Justice of India, Justice K.G. Balakrishnan, senior leaders of the left parties and the BJP attended the iftar. Mumbai celebrates the festival of Ganesha in many parts of the city. The temporary stalls keep the idols artistically decorated and depict special themes. The Ganpati Mandal settings showcase Maharashtrian culture and the history of the festival. Smaller mandals of the city incorporate themes that display the work of Marathi idols like Tilak and various other historic legends. Well, that's the way it was in India and the world this evening. It's time for us to wind up. But before that, a quick look at the top stories. Scientists launch Big Bang experiment in Geneva to unravel the mysteries of the universe. Former Punjab Chief Minister Amrinder Singh expelled from State Assembly after being indicted by a House committee on charges of alleged financial irregularities. OPEC decides to cut oil output by more than 5 lakh barrels per day. Oil prices rebound. Anand Sports, Pankaj Advani wins the ONGC IBSF World Billiards Championship in the time format. That's it in this news bulletin. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night.